Hey everyone, and welcome to my new tiny apartment workshop. I am super excited to be in this new space. We've been moving in over the last few weeks, and as anyone who's moved would know, we have a ton of cardboard boxes. And I'm not talking cheap, small Amazon boxes. A lot of these boxes are really big and sturdy, and some of them are even double thick. So when we started breaking them down and wrapping them up, I started feeling a little guilty about just putting them out on the curb to be recycled into more cardboard. You know, cardboard boxes are a really useful material. They've helped me a lot throughout my maker journey. So I started thinking, I wonder if there's a way that I can take as much of this great cardboard as possible and turn it into something that's beautiful and useful. And then the idea hit me, a chair. I've never made a chair before, let alone one out of cardboard, so I thought I would start simple. I thought about Adirondack chairs and how their shape is basically a simple profile that's extruded into 3D, and this seemed like the perfect operating premise to make a cardboard chair. I looked at a bunch of pictures of Adirondack chairs to get a sense of their relative proportions and angles, and then started sketching out some shapes to transfer this idea into a smaller lounge chair. Once I had a shape that I was happy with, I took a piece of cardboard and tried sketching it in real size. I really wasn't going for perfection here. I just needed a starting point that I could begin to refine. So once the shape looked vaguely chair-like, I cut it out with my Ulfa utility knife so I could put it to the test. And by test, I mean awkwardly hover over it and try to figure out if it would be a comfortable chair if it existed in three dimensions. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I feel like the issue is that it's too far back without enough support. I feel like if it's like this, that's what you want. Yeah, so sitting up a little more. Yeah, it's too reclined. As I expected, testing out this first shape provided a lot of useful data. We realized that the back was a little too reclined and there wasn't quite enough support under your knees. So I transferred the template to a new piece of cardboard to further refine the shape. For the second test, I figured out that lying on the floor on my side was a much easier way of testing how the contours of the chair fit the contours of my body. And this second template was way better. It was almost perfect, but the seat still felt a little short. So for the final iteration, I just extended the seat length by a few inches. The third iteration was pretty spot on. I could have made the seat a little longer to make the chair more comfortable, but I also had the thickness of the chair to worry about, and I was right at the upper limit of what would fit inside a lot of the larger boxes that I had. So rather than waste a lot of cardboard and possibly not have enough to make the thickness of a chair, I called it a happy medium and went on to make a duplicate of this template to make my master. The two halves of the master template are held together with standard white glue. I also used CA glue with activator to hold the pieces together while the white glue dried. Of course, you could make the master template with a single layer of cardboard, but I needed to use this thing to trace 120 pieces of cardboard to form the full thickness of the chair. So I thought it was best to double up for durability. With the template figured out, I could switch into production mode and start the long process of tracing and cutting out layers of cardboard. If you want to make your own cardboard chair, I created a full-size dimensioned PDF version of my template, and I have it available on my website. I'll put a link for that in the description. Cutting 120 pieces of cardboard out in one shot isn't really my idea of a good time and I really wanted to start bringing the chair into 3D. So once I had about 10 pieces of cardboard cut out, I started gluing the layers together. Like before, I used CA glue with activator to hold the pieces together while the white glue dried. But the activator was really slowing down my process, not to mention smelling up my workshop. So when the can ran out, 
I just switched to using the CA glue on its own, which just required holding the pieces together a little longer before the CA glue would kick. Over the next couple of weeks, I used cutting out cardboard as a way to take breaks in between tasks that required a bit more brain power. It was also a great excuse to listen to some awesome audiobooks and podcasts. And then every time I built up about 10 or so pieces, I would switch gears to gluing and add on to my ever thickening chair. Some of the boxes I used were a little small or had weird cutouts. So you'll also notice that from time to time, I had to cut out small patches of cardboard to fill in the gaps. Flipping the chair before gluing on each piece helped keep the layers flat while the glue hardened. And as an extra safety measure, I stacked some heavy books on the chair after each gluing session. Before long, I was a box cutting machine and I figured out the most efficient layout to get as many cutouts as I could out of a single box. I cut every piece of cardboard in this project with my Olfa utility knife. And this thing is by far one of my favorite tools in my shop. It only took four segments of the snap-off blade to cut every single piece of cardboard. It was super exciting when the chair got wide enough that I could actually sit on it. But my goal was to make it 18 inches wide, so I still had a long way to go. As you might have expected, I did eventually run out of moving boxes, but luckily, my girlfriend's work goes through a ton of cardboard boxes, so I asked her to set aside some of their biggest boxes so I could build the chair up to its final thickness. This is one of the most satisfying projects I've ever made. To start with a pile of cardboard boxes, develop a template, and gradually build up a real furniture item layer by layer is pretty cool to say the least. I think if I were to change anything, I would just add a slight curve to the back, but for a cardboard chair, it's surprisingly comfortable. And to see Eden come over of her own volition and sit down in the chair to study for about an hour was quite the vote of confidence. You might think that Penny would be super interested in using the chair as a scratching post, which she does from time to time, but one of her favorite things to do is hang out in the little cave that's formed by the legs. If you download the template and make your own cardboard chair, I would love to see pictures. Tag me on Instagram at MorleyKurt and be sure to follow me over there to see what I'm up to between projects. If making a cardboard chair isn't for you, you can also directly support my videos on Patreon. One of the benefits I've been doing over there is a behind the scenes podcast for every episode. I've been having a lot of fun with them and I'll leave a link to my Patreon in the description. And as always, I would really appreciate it if you just checked out the rest of my channel and considered subscribing. Thanks for watching and have a great day.